Hello! Today I'm going to be going a little bit further into ggplot2, and in particular what I'm going to be talking about is scales and transformations. So in the last video on ggplot2, uh, we talked about how we need to put data, some aesthetics, the different axes on which our variables or data will vary, uh, and then a geometry to put together to get a plot. Uh, and I also mentioned that each of those axes is going to have a scale. It has to. Right? We know that our data varies along some axis. So we have an x-axis, we have a y-axis, and well, how does it vary? What are the numbers that it covers? Well, what are the, co the categories that it covers, the types that it covers? So we have some sort of scale that goes into every single axis. Even if we don't specify it ourselves, it has some sort of default scale uh, in ggplot2. Now, one of the cool things about ggplot2 is it allows you to directly manipulate these scales uh, using these scale functions. So if you have a scale in your data, you have a color scale or an x-axis scale or a y-axis scale or whatever, you can manipulate that scale and change how your data is scaled and presented uh, using scale underscore whatever the name of the axis is, so x or y or color or fill or whatever, and then another underscore, and then the type of scale that it is. So is it a continuous variable? Is it a discrete variable? Is it a date variable? All that sort of stuff. Uh, and so you put in one of these functions, you add it to your ggplot object, and that will allow you to manipulate the scale. Let's see how this works. Uh, so first of all, the, 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 one of the key distinctions that we need to think about is the difference between discrete and continuous scales, because they're both going to operate a little bit differently in terms of how we can work with them. Uh, so a standard example, let's say we have scale underscore x underscore continuous. Uh, this would tell us that the x variable has a continuous uh, scale. It varies continuously, and so some of the elements that apply to a continuous scale, things like uh, log transformations, would apply here. Uh, or we can say that x has a discrete scale, and it would know, okay, I need to treat each of these things as a separate bin, uh, and I don't need to think about, you know, any sort of continuous transformation. Uh, and we can do this, of course, with any sort of axis that we have in our data, not just x, but also y, or color, or fill, or size, or some of them have to be discrete, so for example, line type, uh, you know, is it dashed or dotted or solid? You know, you can't really have that be a continuously varying thing. That would only work uh, with a discrete variable. Uh, once we have our scale function, uh, what can we do with it? Well, we can set the kinds of odd things that it is. So, for example, if we have a color scale, uh, we might default it might be red, blue, and green. Uh, but you might want it instead to be orange, black, and purple. Uh, so you could set which particular values it shows. Uh, so, and what we're really doing here is we're taking the underlying data, whatever it is actually in that column, and we're turning it into whatever we want the outcome to be, what we actually want to be on the graph. So that could be taking our numbers and turning them into logged versions of those numbers. It could be taking one, two, and three and turning those into black, green, and purple. Uh, it could be lots of other stuff, right? It could be taking uh, my, you know, 10, 10, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and turning that into 10%, 20%, 30%. We're transforming raw data into some sort of outcome, whether that outcome is a color or that outcome is a number or that outcome is a textual version of a number, right? Whatever it is, uh, we're doing that sort of transformation is the idea here. Uh, also, all kinds of, uh, I mentioned the discrete and continuous uh, versions. We can also set manually uh, any sort of value transformation that we want. We can say, okay, given the this input value, here's the specific output that I want you to have. Right, a log transformation applies a function to all the values in the same way. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want specific values to take on specific outcomes, uh, which you can do with the manual versions of these scaling uh, functions. So I've talked about a lot of these scaling functions. It's got a little bit difficult maybe to put in your head. Maybe it'll be easier if we have some examples. So let's start with the baseline graph. So we have this graph, which we used last time as well, uh, and it shows the ratings, uh, the quality ratings of three different uh, uh, foods based on your ratings and my ratings. So we have apples, bananas, and carrots. Uh, we have my ratings, and we have your ratings, and then we have the actual ratings. Uh, we can draw this out in a ggplot column graph, uh, where the aesthetics are on the x-axis. We have person, so it's me first on the x-axis, and then you. Uh, I can tell you already, this is a discrete or categorical variable. On the y-axis, we have the quality number that we put in, so we can see that up here on the, on the, on the i-axis, and we've had a fill axis which is the fill color, so I want the color to differ by category. And then I just put in a geom call uh, geometry. The dodge position, uh, by default, uh, ggplot column or bar graphs are stacked when you have groups, so it would be me and then you on top. If I want them to go next to each other, that's what the position equal dodge does. So let's put some scales on here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manipulate all the scales. Let's go buck wild. So first of all, I'm going to take this the y scale. So the, the y scale is continuous, right? It was those per, it was those percentage ratings that I gave, but I wanted them to be percentages. 
So I'm gonna say, uh, instead of just being a number as it was before, right? I said 0.06 became 0.06, right? No real transformation there. But I want it to be a percent. So I'm gonna say uh, this scale Y continuous, that's the kind of Y axis we're working with. We have a Y axis that's continuous, so we use scale Y continuous. I want you to label these values as though they're percentages. So I'm gonna use the percent function from the scales package, uh, and this will take my 0.06 and turn it into 6%. Uh, I'll also set the uh, the limits. I want, and this what this will do is this will tell me how much of the, uh, of the range to show. So uh, before uh, it it topped out at six percent, right? But if I want to show a little bit of headroom, I want it to go all the way from zero to ten percent. I can use limits to tell it how much to show of the data. Uh, next, I'm going to do my x-axis. This is a discrete variable, right? It's either me or you. Those are discrete values. There's not really a more or less there. It's just me and you. All that I'm going to do here is I'm going to move where that axis is shown. I'm going to put it on the top. So I'm going to say position equals top. That moves it from the bottom where it was before, right? It was on the bottom. Now it is on the top here. Now the fill values, uh, I want to pick some specific colors for the apple, banana, and carrot that I have. Right? I said that fill equals category, so it's picking a different color for each category, but I want to tell it what color to pick for each category. So I'm going to set, use values. Usually when you're using a manual a manual scale, you want to set the values to tell it which things map on to which other things. And I want to say, hey, the apple category, that's going to become red. The banana category, that's going to become yellow. The carrot category, that's going to become orange. So you can set the values manually in this way. And that's what we've done. So we get a red apple, a yellow banana, and an orange carrot. Uh, we get our percentages up here on the left-hand side. We've moved our x-axis to the top. There we go. Uh, now, color is a particular issue because it's kind of difficult to pick colors. You have to either look up the list of color names or you have to put in the hexadecimal colors, right? So, you know, red, yellow, and orange is pretty easy. But what if we want something more complex? Or what if we want, it, if we have like eight different categories and we don't want to have to manually set out every single color that we want? For this, I like to use the palettier package, uh, which is a handy way of adding uh, color palettes to your data. And so if you load in the Palettier package, it adds a new scale function. Uh, so um, uh, the scale fill or scale color Palettier function, there are two versions of it, one for discrete color palettes, one for continuous uh, color palettes. So this is a discrete variable. Uh, and so I'm going to use the uh, Google palette from the YAR package, uh, and that will just automatically pick uh, some Google type colors for this. So here it's got the Google blue, the Google red, and the Google what that, orange. Uh, and it applies it there in a much easier way than having to type out every single one. Now, uh, for this, when you load the palette to your package, you're going to want to look through all the palettes to see what looks good. But once you've found one, uh, you can add it very easily with the scale fill palettier underscore D or scale fill palettier underscore C for continuous or scale color palettier C or scale color palettier D. All those apply to the different axes uh, that we might need to fill in for. Uh, Here's a continuous one. So uh, this time I'm doing, I'm choosing the color not based on the category, uh, and I'm doing it based on the y-axis. So a higher y-axis gets a, uh, I've got this cool to warm uh, continuous scale that goes from blue on the very low end to red on the very top end. You can see the scale here. So the very short ones get blue, the very tall ones uh, get red. And so what have I done here? Um, how did I get uh, so I've got my fill is equal to quality now, right? The fill color is being chosen, chosen based on the quality number. So if I want to have something grouped, uh, but I don't want it to be uh, assigned to a different, a specific actual value, so I don't want it to be colored differently, anything like that, I just say group. So group equals category will separate out the category groups, but it won't choose the colors based on the group or the fill based on the group or anything else based on the group. It will just graph them separately, which is what I want here. So we've used our scales so far to do some manipulations of our uh, of our scales, right? We turned those y-axes into percentages. We chose our colors in a number of different ways for that fill axis. Uh, we can also transform things more generally. Uh, a lot of transformation functions, uh, or a lot, a lot of these scale functions have trans options. So you, if you set the trans option, there are a number of different transformations that you can do. For example, to continuous variables, uh, you can transform them into dates. You can, you can do log transformations. You can turn them into probabilities. You can take the reciprocal. So instead of x, it's 1 over x. You can take the square root, the reverse. The most common one that I use is log. Really, log transformations are the most common ones that 
that I would say get applied uh, for, for continuous variables. You might want a log axis. For example, if you have a variable that has a lot of data down here at the very bottom and like a couple of observations down here at the right, your graph will get kind of skewed because it will zoom way out to get these observations out here, even though there's only a few of them. You do a log transformation, suddenly everything's a lot closer together and easier to see. So sometimes you want to do a log transformation um, and you can do it that way. You can also, I already use the scales percent option to label a variable as being a percentage variable. There are other very there are other functions from scale. So for example, if instead of labeling it as a scale variable, maybe I just want to round it. Maybe my data is 0.1234567, but I only want it to show 0.123, I can use the scales number function uh, to uh, pick a particular accuracy as to how it, it prints out. Or if I want it to be dollars, maybe my y-axis was not percentages, but it was dollars, $5, $10, $20. There's the dollar function in the scales package, which will format it as dollars. Uh, so there's lots of different ways you can transform the presentation of it using the, scale, the scales package. Uh, so you can use the trans option in the scale function to do something like take the log or reverse the scale. Uh, there's also some uh, very commonly used transformations like log that have their own functions themselves. So scale x log 10 will do a log transformation in a similar way to doing the trans option and setting it equal to log. Uh, or scale y reverse will reverse the scale. So if I said uh, I wanted the small percentages to be up top and the big percentages to be up at the, down at the bottom, I would use scale y reverse. Uh, scale bind will also will take a continuous variable and put it into bin, sort of just discretize it. Uh, which you might want to do sometimes if you want to simplify presentations. That's the, you can use transformations with these scale functions as well. Let's do an example here. So here is an example of a scatter plot of uh, miles per gallon uh, for certain car types on the x-axis and horsepower on the y-axis. I've colored things separately by the the weight of the car. So heavier cars get a lighter color. Uh, uh, um, lighter cars get a darker color. And I've done a point geometry. So let's do some transformations. First of all, let's take our x-axis and let's uh, make it a log scale. Uh, and uh, let's reverse the uh, the y-axis. So now we're going to have the uh, really high horsepower cars down at the bottom and the really low horsepower cars up at the top. We're also going to have a log scale for the miles per gallon. Notice that the gap between 10 and 20 here is really big, but the gap between 20 and 30 is very small, right? So because we're using that log transformation, so the really big uh, differences get shrunk down a lot. Uh, and we're going to bin the color. So, it, you know, we have this sort of continuous weight measure here, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's cut it into five different bins of color. So we just have sort of have different classes of weight uh, and they're colored differently there. All right, that is the basics of how to use scales in ggplot2, which also allows us to do transformations, two very important parts of the grammar of graphics. Uh, so whatever axes we have, X, Y, color, fill, line type, size, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we can adjust how they are presented using scales. Scales affect how we take the raw data and turn it into things that we see on the graph, either in terms of how those things are labeled, for example, by turning a, a 0.06 into a 6%, or in terms of how they are actually scaled on the graph, taking a regular variable and turning it into a log scale variable. Uh, and there's lots of flexibility here, and since it all follows the same syntax, it should be fairly easy to implement. All right, that's it. Thank you.